Hi, and welcome to the fifth instalment in this series of webcasts looking at Azure Custom Vision. And in this one, we're going to look at using the Image Classification Training API to automate the creation and training of projects using C Sharp. My name's Alan Smith, and I work for Active Solution based in Stockholm, Sweden. This is one of a series of webcasts that I've recorded on Azure Custom Vision, so you may want to check out the other ones. And the code from this webcast is available at github slash Alan Azor. So let's take a quick look at the documentation for the Custom Vision Training API. Let's take a quick look at the methods we'll be using. We'll be using the create image tags methods to generate the tags that we're going to be using to tag the images with. I'm going to be using create images from files because I'm going to be uploading files from my hard drive into the Custom Vision project. We've also got an option to create images from URLs, which is useful if you've got the images stored in blob storage. We'll also be using the train project method to start the training process of the Custom Vision project. You can access the API directly. It's much easier to use an SDK. You can see that we've got SDKs available in a number of languages. I'm going to select the documentation for the .NET SDK, go to Custom Vision Training, and select the Custom Vision Training Client class. Now we've got various methods on the class, but it's much easier to use the client extension methods. So I'll expand that and select methods and select the create images from file method. Here you can see we specify a reference to the client, a GUID, which is gonna be the project ID and an image batch, meaning we can upload multiple images in one call. The train project async method, again, takes a reference to the client a GUID, which is a project ID. And then there's a number of optional parameters we can specify if we want to customize the way that the model is trained. You can see if I'm doing advanced training, I can specify the training type, reserve budget in hours, and also a notification email address so I can get an email of the statistics and results when the training is complete. I've created a new project for this webcast. and I'm using a .NET Core console application. In program.cs, if you're running through this yourselves, you'll have to set the endpoint key and the training key. And you'll find those available in the Azure portal. Remember that the training key is going to be different from the prediction key, which was used in previous webcasts. I've got a reference to the training files, and I'm using the Simpsons dataset in this example. And I'm setting the project name to test01. I've put all the functionality in a class called Custom Vision Classification Trainer. So I'm going to create a new one of those, and I'm using a using because it supports the iDisposable interface. And that's because of the custom vision training client. I'm setting two variables, the images per class and the number of classes. So first we'll just do a quick test, only using 10 images per class and three classes. So the work through that we go through is to first create the project, secondly, upload the training images, and then thirdly, we can train the model. And this may take a few seconds or a minute or so to complete. Once that's done, we can retrieve some statistics about the training iteration and display those in the console. So let's take a look at how this class is implemented. In the constructor, I'm creating a new training client using the provided endpoint and the provided training key. I'm setting default values for the images per class to 50, which is a reasonable number. A number of classes I'm setting to int max value. And this will mean that the number of classes that were created will be the number of folders in the training data that contain at least 50 images. We won't upload any of the classes that has less than 50 because that will generate an unbalanced training set. The next stage is to create the project. So we await training clients create project async, specifying the name of the project. That's gonna create the project and return details of the project, including the project ID, which is gonna be used in all future calls. So we're gonna return that project ID so it's available to the caller. The next stage is to upload the training images. So first, I'm going to get a list of the folder names that have a minimum of the number of required images. This is fairly simple. I just iterate through the folders, check that the folders have the appropriate number of images. If they do, I add them to the folder names. And if we've reached the required number of classes, we break out from this method. The next thing to do is to iterate through these folders and upload and tag the images. So here I'm awaiting tag test images. In this method, the first thing that we're going to do is to create a tag with the appropriate tag name and retrieve the ID of the tag. 
When we're uploading the images, we actually require a list of tags. Because in some scenarios, images could contain more than one tag. So here I'm creating a list that only contains a tag ID. I then get a list of the files within that particular folder. And for the image batches, I'm generating a list of image file create entity. We then loop through the files. And for each file, we're generating an image file create entity. We're setting the name to the file name and the contents to the byte content of the file. We then add this to the batch and increment the count. If the count is equal to the number of images required for the class, we're going to break from this loop. If the count is equal to 64, this is the maximum size of a batch when we're using create images from file async. So we're going to create a new batch, await create images from files async, passing in the project ID in the batch, and then we clear the image file create entity list so we can start creating the next batch. When we drop out of the loop, if the image file create entity list is greater than zero, we're going to create a batch for the remaining images and await create images from file async again. So now that the images are uploaded, we can now train the model. So I'm awaiting train project async and passing in the project ID. And I'm not specifying any additional parameters. So this will result in the model being trained with the default basic training settings. The training process could take several seconds or minutes, and in some cases, a number of hours. So this method will return once the training has initialized, and the training will still be running. So we have to periodically poll the status of the training iteration to determine when it's been completed. So in this code, I'm awaiting get iteration async, passing in the project ID and the ID of the iteration that we're training. And we're going to do this repeatedly once a second. If the status of the iteration is not equal to training, it means that either the training is complete or maybe an error has occurred. So we're going to exit the loop. We'll print out details of the training time. And this is the timestamp when the training was completed minus the timestamp when the iteration was created. And we can dump that out to the console. I've also added a display statistics method. This is going to retrieve various statistics from the training iteration and display them in the console. And this gives us a bit of insight as to how the statistics are calculated after the training has completed. So we're going to dump out the iteration performance and then iterate through the image performance statistics and the per tag performance. And this is similar to the information that we see in the portal once the training has completed. So let's test to see if this works with these small settings for the image per class and number of classes. So we've created the project, we're uploading the training images for those three classes and starting training. So this time the training completed in four seconds. And if we browse to the portal and refresh, we can see we've got the new project created. We can go into the project and see that we've got these three classes and 10 images per class. So we're using a balanced training set, which is important. In the performance section, we can see that we've got 83% for precision, 83% for recall, and almost 98% for AP. And in the performance per tag, we can see the precision and recall for the image sets that we've used to train the model with. We'll dive into these statistics in a lot more depth in a future webcast. Back to the console application, let's press enter to display the statistics. Here we can see that the values for average precision or AP and recall match the ones that we see in the portal. And in the image performance statistics section, we can see that two tests were performed for each image tag. And we see the results of those predictions in the console. Scrolling down in the console, we can see the statistics for the per tag performance for the three tags that we've used for training the model. So the results look quite reasonable, but because we've only used 10 images for each tag when training the model, and only two tests were performed in each tag when evaluating the model, there's not really enough data here to give a clear indication of the model accuracy. So we really need to run a test with a much larger data set. So let's do that. I'm going to set the project name to test02, set 100 images per class, and int.max value for the number of classes. So we'll iterate through the Simpson data set, and for every class where we have 100 images or more, it will add those images and tag to the model. So let's run the implementation. I've speeded up the video again. You can see it's uploading and tagging all of the classes. And we've got quite a number of classes uploaded there. We're now running the training process. And again, I'll speed up the video for this. 
So the training for this model took 1 minute 37 seconds, which I find really impressive considering I'm running this project on the free pricing tier. So let's move to the portal and select the new project. So this project contains 25 tags, and most of these contain 100 images, though a few of them do contain 99. The reason for that is that we may have duplicate images, or there may be some kind of error with some of the images. But the training set is still very well balanced. In the performance for this training iteration, we can see that the statistics are slightly less accurate. About 83% for precision, 72% for recall, and 82% for the average precision. Let's switch to the console and press enter to display the performance statistics. Comparing these two sets of statistics, we can see that there's slight discrepancies. The average precision, or AP, is consistent, but precision has a value of 82.9 in the portal and 92.3 in the console. And recall has a value of 71.6 in the portal and 62.2 in the console. Scrolling through the image performance statistics, you can see that we've run a lot more tests for each tag. And this is because we've got a much larger data set available. So this is giving us much better results about the accuracy of the model. And looking at the per tag performance and comparing the values in the portal and the console, you can see that we've also got some discrepancies between these values. I'm not sure why we've got these discrepancies, but I will look into it and I'll hopefully mention it when I'm covering the statistics in a lot more detail in a future webcast. My name is Alan Smith, and I work as a developer, trainer, mentor, and evangelist for Active Solution in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm a NASA MVP, and I speak at many international conferences. I'm also involved in the organization of the Cloud Burst Conference and the AI Burst Conference, hosted in Stockholm. I specialize in delivering classroom and on-site training in the Microsoft Azure and AI technologies. I also deliver remote training and mentoring. I host seminars and workshops for companies. I've authored a number of Pluralsight courses, and I also speak at conferences. If you're interested in any of the above, feel free to contact me on cloudcast.net at gmail.com.